Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as usual I'll start with some announcements. Um, fall semester is, I know it sounds like it's a million years away, fall, because we're still enjoying summer, right? But it actually isn't a million years away and we're making plans for fall. So I'll be starting a new Food Over Medicine coaching class uh, for people who want to go through that coaching program and start a chapter, perhaps a Food Over Medicine chapter in your area. Um, very exciting. We have a group of people who are in the process of finishing up the summer session who I think enjoyed it a lot and are looking forward to getting their own chapter started. Um, we have some great packages for fall, combinations of, say, the Diet Lifestyle Intervention course with the coaching program. And um, uh, I'm going to be doing a new class called Diet Fiction based on my new film, Diet Fiction. Well, it's actually Mihal Sarisky's new film, Diet Fiction, that I'm in. But I wrote the companion book, so I'm going to be teaching that this fall. So anyway, if you're interested in learning with us, we have so many great opportunities and some very special offers between now and August 15th. So keep those emails coming. Uh, my email address is pampopper at msn.com. And if you want to talk about um, anything related to careers, we, we really have figured out how to do this and how to get people to want to learn and, and change their ways and all kinds of things. I mean, we've, and, and how to make it economically viable too. So um, if you want to talk about it, send me an email and we will set up a time. So um, a couple topics I think are pretty interesting. Uh, first one is, according to a new study, the more fiber that a person eats, the less likely the person will be depressed. And we actually have quite a bit of evidence for this. Uh, data for over almost 17,000 adults age 20 and older was analyzed to look at the relationship between total cereal, vegetable, and fruit fiber and depressive symptoms. More fiber intake was associated with less depressive symptoms. Now, this study only shows an association, and of those of you who've listened to me for a long time know that you should not jump off the cliff and do anything in response to an association, but the good news is there are so many other studies that have confirmed that this is the, the truth, that uh, people who eat more fiber have less depression and anxiety, and we even have established several mechanisms of action. So it starts with serotonin, which you've all heard of, is a neurotransmitter that influences not only your psychological state, but also physiological and cognitive functions. Now this is the thing that surprises people a lot. 95% of the serotonin in the body is produced in the gastrointestinal tract. So you've always th heard about serotonin in the brain, and, and it is important, it functions in the brain, but actually most of it's produced in the gastrointestinal tract. And it's produced by these very um, particular special cells in the GI tract called enterochromaffin cells, uh, or ECs, and abnormal or altered serotonin production and signaling um, because of the fact that these cells are in the GI tract are associated not only with the things that you've heard about, like depression and anxiety, but also gastrointestinal conditions like irritable bowel, colorectal cancer, diverticular disease, and inflammatory bowel disease. Well, there are several ways in which these EC cells are stimulated to produce serotonin. One is in response to increases in glucose. Well, how does that happen? Well, that's a, a byproduct of carbohydrate metabolism. Where do we find the carbs? We find them in plants. Um, EC cells also respond to mechanical stimulation, including food moving through the gastrointestinal tract. And this is where the connection to fiber becomes really important. Fiber moves through the GI tract more quickly, uh, moves food through the GI tract more quickly, which means that these cells are stimulated um, significantly more often, and then that uh, stimulates the production of serotonin from these EC cells. Another mechanism, still yet another one, is through the action of the gut microbiome. In fact, EC cells depend on microbes in order to produce serotonin. In one study, EC cells in germ-free mice produced 60% less serotonin than mice who had normal gut microbiomes. Well, the common denominator for all of these mechanisms of action that I'm talking about is a plant-based diet. Numerous studies have shown that eating more fruit, vegetables, and whole grains results in lower risk of depression and anxiety. A study of vegetarians, vegans, and omnivores concluded, and I'm going to read this quote because I think it's quite significant, increasing restriction of animal foods, in other words, going from vegetarian to vegan, is associated with improved mood. So the more plants you eat, the happier you get. And actually, the happier the planet is and the happier the animals are, everybody's happier when you eat more plants. 
Plant-based diets are better for the gut microbiome too, with a vegan diet having the biggest impact since the microbes are so important uh, for the production of serotonin. Studies show that increased fiber increases populations of beneficial bacteria, and in addition to contributing to the serotonin production, as I mentioned earlier from those EC cells, gut microbes are literally a Xanax factory. They produce something called gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA, which has a positive influence on emotional well-being. In fact, anti-anxiety medications like Xanax target the GABA signaling system. So you can actually set up a whole uh, Xanax factory in your gut if you eat the right foods. Not surprisingly, based on that, taking probiotics improves mental health too, reducing depression and anxiety and improving neurotransmission of serotonin. So I wouldn't want you to think you just take probiotics and it solves all the world's problems, but eat a plant-based diet, take probiotics, really pay attention to your gastrointestinal health your production of serotonin will, will increase. Uh, that definitely will affect your mood and um, your physical health and your mental health will be better. So I thought that was really fascinating. And in fact, I just taught a course earlier this summer called um, Food, Exercise, and Mental Health. And um, I have like eight hours of lecture on this topic, including some stuff about exercise too. But um, I don't think that, that all mental health issues and psychological issues are biological in nature. However, your biology has a great deal to do with how, um, how you feel and how you, I mean, energy levels and all kinds of things related to mental health. So. Um, eat those plants and you will feel better. And that somewhat explains when you, uh, why you see so many stories and testimonials on internet sites and blogs where people say, not only did I lose weight and my skin cleared up and my cholesterol went down, but my depression lifted and I felt better when I started eating a better diet. All right, now I'm going to talk about my really favorite subject, which is exercise. We can never get people to do enough of it without a lot of pleading and begging and cajoling and threatening. I mean, I've actually threatened to kidnap people from their homes and bring them to the gym and handcuffs and make them exercise with me. It's against the law, or I actually would probably do it. Anyway, there are a lot of reasons to exercise. It increases energy, it lowers blood pressure and glucose levels, it improves mental health, and it builds balance, stability, and coordination. And it really is the ticket to living independently for your entire lifespan because if you don't become frail, frailty is the leading reason why people end up in nursing homes. You have a lot better chance of living on your own for your whole lifespan. But for many people, one of the biggest reasons they exercise is to lose weight. Uh, many people, exercise increases weight loss. It actually works for that because, I mean, it's just a math situation. It increases the calorie burn and that makes the pounds come off. But there are a lot of people who say, look, I'm eating better than I've ever eaten and I am exercising like four or five days a week and I just don't see my weight changing that much. Well, we found that there are lots of reasons why this might be the case and this could include Believe it or not, not eating enough food or enough calories, and I did a video clip on this topic a few months ago, the fact that you have to eat more to weigh less sometimes if you've been starving yourself to try to lose weight for a long time. Uh, continuing to eat too much fat, eating too much processed food, not engaging in enough exercise or exercise that is not high enough in intensity. There's also some evidence showing that many people they don't really do this consciously, but they increase their calorie intake as a result of exercising more, justifying the decision because they're burning more calories. And their hunger does tend to increase a little bit. It's called compensatory eating, and it can have a negative effect on weight loss. Well, in response to a lot of conflicting information, exercise helps with weight loss, it doesn't, all that sort of thing, a group of researchers decided to look at this issue um, and conducted a study to look at whether or not increasing physical activities results in more weight loss in spite of the compensatory eating, which seems to accompany almost any increase in physical exercise. So how they did this was 31 overweight and sedentary adults were enrolled and the researchers measured their metabolic rate and body composition at the beginning of the study. Um, they also took very detailed diet histories and then the participants were divided into two groups. One group was told to engage in fast walking or some other form of exercise five times a week in order to burn 300 calories per session or 1500 extra calories per week. For most of the subjects, they ended up spending about 30 minutes a day, five days a week doing it. The other group was instructed to burn 600 calories per session or 3,000 extra calories per week. Both groups were given a fitness monitor to wear and both were instructed not to change anything else about their diet and lifestyle, but just to do this exercise. The program lasted for 12 weeks and then all of the participants were tested and evaluated again. 
Well, here's what happened. The subjects that burned 1,500 calories per week lost little to no body fat, and some of them actually gained weight. Subjects who did twice as much exercise were thinner, and 12 of them had lost at least 5% of their body fat in only 12 weeks. Well, the researchers then did some additional calculations to determine how much the participants had engaged in that compensatory eating I mentioned earlier during the study period. The subjects in the group that burned 1,500 calories had compensated by eating 950 extra calories. So they negated a lot of the calorie burn that they accomplished through exercise. The group engaging in more exercise com compensated to almost the same extent. It was about 1,000 extra calories, but remember, they burned 3,000 calories, which left them with a 2,000 calorie deficit, and, um, and that resulted in significant fat loss. So the bottom line is that um, we've said for a long time here that um, any movement, if you're sedentary, any movement is a good start. I mean, if, you, if the only thing you can do is walk to the mailbox and back or the end of your street and back, that's all great. That's what you start with. But at some point in time for exercise to build fitness and to really help you with weight loss, you've got to do enough of it. And that means enough days per week. We've always said five or six days a week, 45 to 60 minutes in your target heart zone, and it has to get harder. So what's happening is a lot of people are busy exercising, but they're not getting much done because it just isn't enough activity um, and you're not getting enough calorie burn. So if you want to lose weight, you've got to really pay attention to the optimal diet, and then you really, really, really want to um, increase that exercise. And of course, people say it's the most hateful thing they do. You won't hate it if you do it long enough, you know? It's like anything else. When you get good at it and you're more comfortable, you'll like it a lot better. And I can promise you, you'll like your body a whole lot better if you do these things. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.